today I'm going to give you my top 20, that's right, not just 10, 20 <laughs> spring fragrances. And I've ranked them from number 20 all the way to number one because, I don't know, ranking them's more fun. Also, of course, that makes it harder for me because like I love all of these fragrances, but I don't know. I just, I kind of like doing it. I think it's interesting. So let's go ahead and get started with my number 20 choice. It's a fragrance that I do really love. It's the very first niche fragrance I bought a long time ago. Um, ugh, like 2012, 13-ish, I think is when I first bought a niche fragrance. And that is The Scent of Peace from uh, Bond number nine. Yes. Oh my God. I've, I have so, like so little interaction with this brand anymore in terms of like even like noticing what they make that I've almost forgot the name of it. Uh, but anyway, this is the scent of peace and it was created by Michelle Almerich. I will always love this and I always get compliments on it too. I've gone through several bottles, but this is just like this light, uh, sort of black currant, grapefruity kind of, uh, like fruity floral musk scent little bit of uh, like, I think it's cedar in here too, a little bit of woodiness. But if you like kind of the fruity, floral, woody types of fragrances, I think you should check out the Scent of Peace for her, of course. Um, they do have a for him that's in like a more opaque bottle with I think a little bow on it. Never smelled that one. But anyway, um, this one is like, I think this is the style that Bond does the best. I think they do these like sort of fruity, floral, woody uh, fragrances really well. Uh, a lot of their fragrances I don't love, although Chinatown is really good as well, but this is still my favorite of everything I've tried from them. Next up is one from Chanel, and this is kind of one of their basic fragrances, but it is uh, Chanel Chance Au Tendre, and this is the EDP. I do think I prefer it slightly over the EDT. Uh, it was created by Olivia Polish, of course, and here we have rose, beautiful, like sort of watery rose, and there's yuzu in here. I want to say like kind of I don't know, some, maybe some other citrus, but I think it's yuzu that's supposed to be in this one. And again, it's got like this clean musk sort of floral vibe, not really woody in this case. It's more like fruity, floral, musky in this uh, scenario, as opposed to kind of the woody note that's in the centerpiece. But uh, yeah, I definitely recommend you check out the, the EDP if you haven't. I think usually most people just smell the EDT. Um, they're, you know, I, I like them both, but I do think I slightly prefer this one. So that is uh, Chanel Chant's Eau Tendre, Eau de Parfum. Next we have one from Yves Saint Laurent and it is Blouse. This was created by Quentin Biche. And this is a really pretty rose fragrance. Yeah, this is like rose, a little bit of that sort of like green angelica in here. I think there's pink pepper to kind of brighten it up. It seems like there's pink pepper in this one. Uh, a little bit of musk again, like clean musk. And I think if I remember correctly, it's cashmere wood that's in this one, but uh, like a light, very crisp woodiness in this. So that overall, I would say this is very much like sort of a slightly green watery kind of rose uh, with a little bit of, like I said, the, the brightness from pink pepper. It's a really pretty rose fragrance if you haven't smelled it before. So that one is called Blouse from Yves Saint Laurent. In the number 17 spot is one from Diptyque and this is Fleur de Peau. This was created by Olivier Pachou, and this one to me, I get a lot of ambrette, even though I'm not sure ambrette is credited in it, um, but it's just very strong of ambrette. I think iris, touch of aldehydes in here. Um, and also like in this one, I'm not sure that I'm getting like orris root or maybe carrot seed or both, but it kind of smells like it could be carrot seed in here. Um, and maybe like a little bit of like a saltiness like from ambergris, but mostly I get a really strong ambrette from Fleur de Peau and I love that note. So if you're not familiar, it's sort of like, sort of like a musky kind of note. It gives maybe a little bit, it doesn't smell bad dirty, but like a little bit of like, I don't know, like a little bit of like a, gosh, I don't really know how to, to describe it otherwise, but a little bit of sort of a, a skin-like dirtiness, but again, not in a bad way at all. So I don't know how to describe it better than that. But uh, I love Fleur de Peau, and that is from Diptyque. Then we have another Chanel. This is number 19 Poudre, and this one is Jacques Polge. And this again is uh, an iris sort of scent. So the original number 19 is very much like a green iris. And this one, it still has that green galbanum in it, but I would say that the iris is the strongest note in number 19 Poudre. I think there's like a little bit, there's definitely like some citrusy vibe to it, some clean musk, and I think vetiver in this one too. That's what I pick up mostly. I believe there might be a touch of tonka as well, but if you're looking for like a nice 
sort of green iris scent, but you don't want like really heavy galbanum, then I would try the, the Poudre version of number 19. Again, that's from Chanel. Next up is an affordable niche fragrance. This comes from Essential Parfums and it is Rose Magnetic, created by Sophie Labbe, which they put right there on the label. I really like that. Um, and this smells a lot like Stella, if you've ever smelled um, Stella from Stella McCartney. It smells a lot like that. It is oh, so beautiful. It again is like a watery rose with, I think, lychee. There's some citrus in here, maybe a touch of vanilla, but just an absolutely beautiful watery sort of rose, not overpowering, but it does last. And these uh, Essential Parfum 100 ml bottles, they only cost $75, which for like kind of a more niche brand is fantastic. Uh, they also have, I think like eco-friendly packaging, which I really appreciate. So that one is called Rose Magnetic. Then in the number 14 spot, I have another rose, but it goes in a very different direction. Still a little bit watery, but otherwise not, not that sort of like uh, fruity, citrusy kind of vibe to it. This one is from Christian Dior and it is called Gris Dior, created by Francois Dimaggi. And this one, of course, again is rose, like I just mentioned, but the next most prominent note in this one to me is this beautiful mossiness. I'm sure it's supposed to be oak moss, but you know, probably isn't. Um, but it's like oak moss, I think a tiny touch of patchouli, nothing, I don't wanna say tiny, okay, there's patchouli in this for sure, but it's not, it's not like your typical rose patchouli. Like I said, it's more of the rose and oak moss that are the stars here. Maybe a little bit of something uh, like a, a bergamot or something like that, a little bit of woods. I would guess something like, it kind of smells like cedar to me. But uh, in general, if you are like interested in a watery rose and oak moss combo, I think Greedy Ore is about as good as you can do there, uh, at least that I've smelled. So that one is, like I said, Greedy Ore from Christian Dior. In the number 13 spot, I have one from Les Indemodables, and this is called Rose de Jamal. It's created by Antoine Lee. And this, this house in general, if you find like a set of notes that you're interested in, I honestly don't think you can go wrong. And still to this date, I think this is the discovery set that I've been most pleased by because there were many things in the discovery set that I really loved. Uh, the Vanija Van, still probably my favorite, uh, and then the Mousse de Sable, but for spring, Rose de Jamal, I love. Probably my third favorite from the entire collection. Um, and this again is another rose fragrance, obviously, hence the name. But to me, this one smells more like the stems of the rose. Like you get the rose petals, but it smells like you just cut like sort of the woody, slightly like the green sort of woody stems of the rose. And you can smell that sort of woody greenness coming from there. I think there's mint in this one. Definitely, like I said, a woodiness to it, but oh, it's just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I honestly feel as if like I'm snipping roses off of a rose bush when I smell this because I do get kind of the leaves and the branches as well. So that one is Rose de Jamal, a beautiful rose fragrance. And if I remember correctly, I can't remember exactly like how many, but they use like just an absurd amount of actual rose petals essentially in this to get the amount of rose oil needed to produce this beautiful, very realistic scent. So check that out. It's pricey, but very well done. And number 12, we have one from Byredo. I don't get a lot of their fragrances, but this one I've had for a long time. It is Bal de Freak. Uh, this one's created by Jerome Epinette, and it very much is nostalgic kind of scent for me because I've mentioned this before, but there used to be a body shop sort of fragrance oil that you could burn in your house that smelled just like this. And that was way before this came out. Um, so do I know that the person who made this ever smelled that or that they've, like anybody at Byrode has ever smelled that? No, but it does smell just like it. Oh, this is so nice. So this one is supposed to have, I think like tangents or marigold in it, but you get vetiver, um, black currant in this one for sure, a little bit of citrus. I would say this is another like sort of clean musky kind of, uh, you know, like a fruity floral woody kind of fragrance. So it does honestly, like if you like this one, you'll like this one and vice versa, I think because they have a lot of similarities, uh, but this one definitely the vetiver stands out quite a bit and it's just fantastic. I love Balde Freak. So that is from Byredo. And then the last one before we hit the top 10 is one from Chloe, and this is Lavanda from their Atelier de Fleurs collection. So Lavanda was created by Quentin Biche, and essentially this is a lavender solo floor. And 
It's so beautiful. This line is just amazing if you're looking for some really high quality, light, absolutely gorgeous solo floors. Now, is it only lavender in here? Probably not. This is like a light, clean, airy lavender to me though. It's not that like more, you know how sometimes it can go more like herbal quality? This is not it. This smells like you have um, like maybe fresh lavender in like your house and it's clean and the air is crisp um, and it's just kind of wafting through, you know, kind of the air every once in a while. So beautiful. I love lavanda. So again, that's from the Atelier des Fleurs collection from Chloe. The bottles are gorgeous too. And this is how big? This is a five fluid ounce bottle. So I'll have it the rest of my life. <laughs> All right, let's do top 10. Here we go. So top 10, we're going to start with one from Zerjeff that I talked about recently in a vanilla video. This is from their Casamirati line and it's called Dama Bianca. And this is a beautiful vanilla fragrance, but it is a very light, white, fluffy vanilla with, I think, is it kumquat in this one? Um, it's, yeah, kumquat. Uh, there's like some iris in here. Gosh, I would say again, like ambrette and or musk, something like that. A little bit of like woodiness. Yeah, this is just beautiful. And I get a lot of compliments on this one as well. So that one is called Dama Bianca from Zertjaf. In the number nine spot is another composition by Antoine Lee. This is called Pure Distance White, number six. And so the Pure Distance line, I got a discovery set of them because I wasn't gonna blind buy any. They are very expensive, but Antoine Lee did like three for them. And I think the ones that he did were my favorite of all of the Pure Distance line. So I bought this one and black, but there was a third that he did that I really enjoyed as well. Anyway, so let's talk about Pure Distance White. So this is another rose fragrance. Oh, this was a little bit more powdery kind of rose. It's absolutely gorgeous. I would say in this one, there's like an iris in here um, and definitely a muskiness. So this is more of like a clean musky rose, um, maybe even like it's different, of course, but maybe even in line uh, with like the Narciso Rodriguez kind of musk, if you pair that with a beautiful rose, like a very like true to form rose petal scent, I think that might be kind of the combo that you would get here. And like I said, I can pick up sandalwood, I would say for sure, I can pick up the iris. And man, it's so gorgeous, but maybe there's something woody in here too, besides sandalwood, I don't know. Or something slightly green, I'm not sure, but it's definitely like a beautiful powdery kind of musky rose. So that is Pure Distance White, uh, very high quality fragrance, but also very expensive. Uh, and then another fairly pricey one, but fantastic, is from uh, Frederic Mall, and this is Lodi Vert. So this is created by Jean-Claude Elena, as it says right there. Again, I love when they credit the perfumers. I think that's what all the brands should do. But this one is a very light fragrance compared to most of the Frederick Mall line, in my opinion. And it's one of my favorite, if not my very favorite from the entire line. So to me, the prominent note in this is this beautiful, fluffy, sort of almondy heliotrope, but there's definitely iris in this one as well. I would say musk, uh, again, very clean, uh, kind of a green angelica vibe to it, and maybe a little bit of florals, but it's mostly that nice fluffy almondy heliotrope, I think, in this one. Uh, light, airy, ethereal, some words that come to mind with Lodi Vert, but uh, I love wearing this one in the spring. All right, moving on to number seven, and this one's actually a flanker. This is Ormond Jane's Montebacco Verano. Uh, and so this one I tried last summer and ended up having to buy a bottle for myself. Oh, this is a really nice green tobacco fragrance. And normally like tobacco fragrances aren't what I would think of off the top of my head for spring, but because this is a very green tobacco, I think it's very fitting for spring and probably also like that transitional period into fall. With this one, I think, I think it's grapefruit. There's some sort of citrus, but it kind of seems like a little bit slightly bitter, like grapefruit. So I think there's grapefruit in here with that green tobacco and maybe a slight like uh, leathery quality. Definitely woody, but mostly just like this beautiful citrusy green tobacco. I think that a lot of uh, guys would like that. And in fact, by the way, almost everything I've talked about today is unisex. Um, but this one in particular, I think might appeal to a lot of men. So check that one out. That is Montebacco Verano. 
Number seven is a Cheris Discontinued Gem from Guerlain. This is a uh, Baser de Russi. I'm not exactly sure how you say that. Uh, but this is no longer available, at least in the United States. You probably can get it from like the, the store in France. Um, and I have to be very careful. This you have to decant into a sprayer. Oh, it's so beautiful. So this was created by uh, Terry Vasser. And it's like, um, it's got like vanilla caramely, but it's not heavy at all. It's not cloying. It's just like a little bit touch sweet. But to me, this is more about the pine note that's in it. Again, not heavy at all. It's sweetened with that like vanilla -y caramel kind of thing. I think there's like something sort of like a tart berry to it. And um, I think it's supposed to have absinthe in it as well. Maybe a touch of tonka. Um, it's not at all like the same as my favorite Ducida Asara, but I think if you like Ducida Asara, there's a good chance you would like this as well, even though they do smell quite different because there are some things that kind of overlap. This is much more lighter and airier. Um, and like I said, more of a spring scent for me, but, uh, but yeah, I think you would like both if you like one or the other. So that one is Guerlain's, uh, Baser de Russi. And I'm pretty sure you can't buy it here anymore, but it is lovely. Okay, so that was number six. I might've said seven, but that was six. So here's five. This is again from Zerjoff, and this is Ibatira. I've talked about this one a lot. This is like in my top two iris scents probably, top two or three for sure. Oh, I love it. Uh, so this is Jacques Flory, I believe, is the person who created this, uh, but this one, yeah, it's this gorgeous sort of iris, uh, citrus, vetiver kind of combo. You get some violet in it, I think, a little bit of clean musk again. Just absolutely gorgeous. I would say there's maybe, maybe cedar in this one, some sort of woody quality to it, maybe other florals, I don't know. But yeah, this is just an absolutely gorgeous sort of clean, uh, citrusy, vetiver slash woody iris scent. Um, really light, I would say, if you like Prada Infusion Diaries, then this definitely would be in your wheelhouse. I have an old bottle, so the new ones look different, but it's the same fragrance, and that again is called Ibatira from Zerjoff. And the number four spot is another one from Chloe's Atelier des Fleurs collection, and this one is called Cedrus. Uh, Quentin Beach created this one as well. In fact, I think he created all three that I have from this line, even though like there are many different perfumers who work for this line. Um, and this one, I love it so much. I love this one. So this one is of course cedar, but this one is not like, obviously it's not a solo floor because it's not a floral fragrance, um, but it's like cedar and oak moss. Vetiver, I would guess is in here too. Maybe a light touch of some sort of like nice, I don't know, like a, not a real like strong spice, but kind of like a subtle subdued spice in here, but definitely get like, cedary vetiver kind of thing going on with the oak moss. It's just gorgeous. This is a light wearing fragrance, so do not expect like heavy projection. In fact, a lot of these are because I'm thinking like spring, light, airy, what, you know, whatever. But this one is very much more of a skin scent, but it does linger. I get wafts of it throughout the day and it is gorgeous. I love Cedrus from Chloe. It's my favorite so far from the entire Atelier Des Fleurs collection. Number three is another just absolutely gorgeous iris scent. This comes from the iris queen herself, Natalie Lorson, and uh, the house is Maison Violet. It's called Nuit Bleu. And this is similar to Ibatira. They do smell a lot alike. This one I would say is a little bit more on the citrusy side. So iris, citrus, musk. Oh, I love it so much. <laughs> Again, maybe a little bit of like a woodiness to it, maybe some other florals as well. Um, but my God, this is stunning. So if again, you like Prada Infusion to Iris, Nuit Blow, definitely check it out. It's gorgeous, just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, always in competition for my favorite Iris scent. And I really enjoy supporting this house of Maison Biele. All right, in the number two spot is my favorite rose fragrance of all time thus far. And it is from Andy Tower. It is called Un Rose de Kandahar. This one you can get, um, but not necessarily all year round because uh, he uses a specific type of roses that he can't necessarily get all year round. So he can only release it uh, if it's sold out, like he can only release it during certain times. But this is, it's so good. This is like rose and almond. Like I get a lot of almond from this one. I think there's uh, some like maybe slightly green tobacco in here as well. A bit of like a, like some sort of like fruit or maybe asmanthus. 
um, which can kind of smell like apricot -y, so I'm not sure exactly which one it is. I think there's ambergris in this because it does have a little bit of a salty quality, maybe touch vanilla, but my God, this is absolutely gorgeous. If you've never smelled uh, Umarosa Kandahar and you're a fan of rose fragrances, you need to check that one out. Uh, I got a sample originally from Small Flower, which is the website for Merz Apothecary. Uh, they're based in Chicago. So um, I don't know that they have it right now, but I think I paid like $5 to get a little sample of this. I think they just decant them into little bottles themselves. But uh, after I smelled the sample, I just ordered the bottle immediately. It's glorious. So that is Une Rose de Kandahar um, from Tower. And the perfumer again is Andy Tower. He's the owner, operator, etc. <laughs> anyway, that's number two. And so what could be better than that? And number one, well, this fragrance I've acquired fairly recently, but been completely obsessed with ever since. This is again from Chanel. So this is the third one from Chanel in this list and it is 1957. So this is from their Les Exclusives line, created by Olivier Polge. And this one is another sort of uh, clean musk scent, but also iris. So it's like a combo of many of these different notes that we've talked about today. Definitely that Chanel Aldehyde sort of vibe to it as well, but that's not like overwhelming by any means. It's just definitely there playing a role in the background. Maybe slight touches of citrus, you know, maybe some other florals, but I'm mostly getting that sort of iris orisy thing here and that beautiful clean musk, beautiful aldehydes. It's absolutely gorgeous. If you've never smelled 1957, do yourself a favor and smell it next time you're in a Chanel boutique or get yourself a sample. Um, I actually did not smell this in the boutique when I visited because I, I don't know, I just hated asking to smell every single thing that they had. And I wish I would have because I would have bought it all the way back then. But I love this one. And there are a few more from this collection that, first of all, I know and love, or I know I love and want to buy, but haven't yet. Uh, but definitely 1957 is my favorite spring fragrance at the moment. So those are my top 20 spring fragrances. Let me know down in the comments what some of your favorite fragrances to wear are this time of year in the spring. I would love to hear if you enjoy any of these or what other recommendations you would have for the spring. Leave me a comment, like the video if you liked it. If not, don't, I don't care. Um, but it, it is helpful. So if you did like it, please do click that little thumbs up button. Helps me to know that you enjoy this kind of video, but also I think it helps like push the video out into the realm of YouTubes. And we want that, right? We want people to see the video because it took me an hour to film. <laughs> Not quite, 45 minutes. And now I have to edit it. So yeah, anyway, you get the idea. Like the video, subscribe, do all that jazz, leave me a comment, and I will see you all real soon. Have a great day, bye.